Great. Welcome to Plan B Forum Lugano. My name is Monty Metzger, and I'd like to welcome you to a very special masterclass. For me, Bitcoin is to the money what email was to the letter. We are in a transformational Web3 revolution. And besides Bitcoin, there are thousands of entrepreneurs inventing uh, the infrastructure, key business models around Web3. And all of these needs community, users, and ultimately funding. So that's why this masterclass is uh, all about, okay, can I get my slides? How to raise millions in an initial token offering the legal way. And this is not a normal presentation where I'll summarize some key thoughts, but it's rather a masterclass. So I'd like to walk you through the whole process on how to do issue a token uh, today in 2022, uh, what are kind of the step stones. Also, if you have any questions, I'm happy to go into the details. We've done this now many, many times, and I wanted to emphasize on the key elements and the key learnings we've done in the past. I'm CEO and founder of LCX. We are based in Liechtenstein. We gained eight regulatory approvals based on the new blockchain laws. The uh, government over there invested a lot into a new regulatory framework, which is not only regulating one piece of the puzzle, but rather the whole token economy, the, the value chain of blockchain, from token creation to trading to other engagements, custody, uh, and even um, physical validation of, of uh, things. So you could tokenize everything. And this is also the key theme around LCX. We've launched with a cryptocurrency exchange and now are growing really with the token sale manager where we offer these services um, to companies. So some of us, uh, or some journalists called us the Goldman Sachs of crypto. And it's partly true because we are doing a similar process known in the old traditional financial world where you do... Um, IPOs, initial public offerings. So if you want to do an IPO at NASDAQ, you don't sell the stock directly. You go to JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, to the big banks, and they issue it for you. They sell it for the first time. Once your stock is at NASDAQ listed, everybody can buy it and also goes to other participants in the market. Um, but this initial offering is a key part. And so this system had been adapted with the blockchain laws in Liechtenstein to uh, the token economy as well. So there's a role called the token issuer, and that's the uh, registration we got, and that's what we can do now on behalf of projects. Um, myself, I started as an entrepreneur in, back in the 90s already. I uh, incorporated my first digital company, internet company, back in 1998, programming websites, HTML, basic PHP. And uh, during that time, it was exciting because we were um, sitting in front of the, the computers there at, at an office of an um, uh, uh, advertising agency. And then somebody came in and said, oh, I have this, this nice uh, brochure. Can you create a website for us? And that was the start of my internet journey. And since then, I had been doing a lot of startups, companies, um, and uh, also venture fund. So prior to... Uh, starting LCX, I've been running Digital Leaders Ventures. We invested in a couple of outstanding tech companies. Uh, one is called Revu, which recently had been acquired by Twitter as the newsletter service. So this was uh, one of the key access we did. Um, and I had been stumbling upon Bitcoin in 2013, uh, where a friend of mine, Adam Draper, said, uh, you have to uh, come to this event, I'll show you everything. And we talked very long about Bitcoin and, and the revolution which is happening. And then ultimately also about blockchain and um, everything Everything was happening. But as a regulated fund during the time, we could not invest. Like we went to the Luxembourg uh, regulator, said like we are this regulated uh, venture fund, like we'd like to invest in Bitcoin and tokens. And they just... Uh, uh, didn't understand anything. <laughs> it was uh, basically uh, locking us out. So when uh, regulation kind of picked up and said, uh, I said, it's the biggest opportunity now to really 
start the next growth wave of the industry. I think uh, we can't solve current problems with old solutions. I'm a big believer in innovation, but nevertheless, when we talk about financial instruments, about raising funds, uh, you can't ignore the laws. And that's why I think this intersection and the balance between regulation and innovation is so important, and that's why I'm here. So I already spoke about the core idea of a token sale. But for me, it's as an entrepreneur, it's also very exciting. And this might be probably the, the most important session here at, at Plan B Forum, as it's all about the community. If you if you start a token sale, it's not, it's uh, I mean it's also about getting some funds in, but it's ultimately finding your users, your community, already before the product is launched or while you're launching the product. So when you um, come up with the first MVP, a minimal viable product, or like the first version of your product, you can you can test it, you get feedback. And that's much different to any entrepreneur in the past, because uh, if you've done a Web2 company, like the a social network, you started and then, or you got funding from like some VCs, angel investors, then you started something and then you grew ultimately. Now you're starting with a vision, an idea, a prototype, you convince people to support you. And ultimately this core group then can also participate on your journey. So, and that's so exciting now. We, we saw that at LCX as well, at our own company, where we launched uh, LCX token as a utility token quite early and said, you can use that later on the platform. And we got like some core believers uh, in, in us and supported us from, from the beginning. And uh, I'm happy that they can profit with it as well um, and uh, join us on, the, on this journey. And I think that's so powerful about a token itself and uh, creating your own coin for a community uh, and so much different than uh, talking and pitching to VCs. And also in that regard, it's com kind of a complete different world because you don't have to convince any like financial investor saying, yeah, you can invest and we do, we'll be acquired or we do an IPO uh, and there's an exit path because as you know, every venture capital firm has an investing phase and then also a divesting. So they want to get out of this deal again. In a, in a token economy, there are some several ways where um, the whole community can engage or convince others or even get out if they want. So it's much more dynamic. Um, so there are three pillars of a, of a product or, a, or an idea, basically. Uh, it's the product, it's a team, and a community. And this all comes together in the white paper, ultimately. So these are things which we are looking at uh, as well. Um, and then I think if you look at the ways to raise funding at the moment, there's this, this equity side with the VCs, business loans, angel investors, which are looking at these things as well. Um, they're doing due diligence. Uh, and uh, but the terms are much different. And then on the other side, you have the tokens uh, where there are also funds now going in or there are launch pads. You can do airdrops to incentivize communities and using your product early on. Um, but uh, there are also SAFT agreements, which you probably heard, uh, standard agreements of future tokens. Uh, so you sign a paper and um, ultimately when the token comes out, you can then distribute it. And then there are DAXs, decentralized exchanges, who does uh, a, a way to uh, launch a token as well. So we looked at all these, all these things. They might be familiar to you. Ad ultimately, for me, uh, on the token side, on this side, it's much more exciting as an entrepreneur because you can engage with your community, as I said. Here on, this, on the equity side, you're pitching to a board of investors or so, and they don't have the power to scale your product. I mean, they can give you some money, they have good advice, uh, probably a brand name to it, but um, being like close to your users, to your clients, is ultimately more, more exciting. So what problems are we facing with doing a token sale? Like if you launch on a DEX, um, an IDO, initial DEX offering, or on many launch pads out there, they let you in the dark with the legal side. Uh, you can launch, there's uh, like many exchanges who do 
I have the launch pads, but they ultimately always put in disclaimers in the in the agreement saying, okay, it's all your fault if if you mess up with the legal side of things. We just provide the platform. At the DEX, it's even more clear. It's just the protocol side, so you are let alone on on this side. And this uh, reflects in also a lot of questions around. There's um, regulators looking into it, like how had it been issued? I think the the biggest ones. Uh, in the news had been ultimately XRP or Tron um, uh, or the Ton network from uh, from Telegram, where they uh, had to pay back all their the investor money they raised with SAFT agreements. And then they said, okay, it's also complicated. We give the money back, try to settle with the, with the SEC. So uh, it's a big, big question. And ultimately in, in US, it's still a big question mark. Um, most of the token sales or all of the token sales we do, we have to exclude uh, North Korea and US. Um, so because both are kind of evil in that sense that they don't have a structure in place for these token sales. But in Europe, it's really standing out. We are here in Lugano, Switzerland is embracing um, the token economy and Liechtenstein is at the forefront of it because they have a law in place which we can leverage. And I will going to talk about this more. Um, and then uh, ultimately, out of out of Liechtenstein, uh, we're part of the European Economic Area. It's kind of a hybrid model: access to uh, Swiss market and whole Europe. And on top of that, uh, it became kind of the role model for the Mika regulation as well. So Liechtenstein's uh, law had been kind of inspired to what is now being in the drafts of the of the European. Uh, law, so I'm um, really looking forward to like the next two or three years when when this comes because uh, we already have an kind of an advantage there. So raising funds without LCX, a big mess. Let's say we uh, teach, we train our entrepreneurs, our partners, and we are sitting on their same on the same side with with them. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through the, the process. Now we did that. Uh, the recent sales we did was uh, DGMV, uh, DigiCorp Labs. So it's a team coming out of the DigiByte community, uh, also very closely related uh, to kind of Bitcoin, uh, the mindset. And they did a B2B arm of, of DigiByte called Digi, uh, DigiCorp Labs and uh, did launch DGMV as a utility token. Then uh, Envision, which is like a Getty images for stock images on the blockchain to verify uh, copyrights uh, for creators and photographers. And NMaker, I think the fastest moving project on the Cardano network, a native token, uh, a ca native Cardano token, so launched on Cardano network. And it's uh, probably the yeah, most used DAP, decentralized app on a Cardano as of now. So since the token uh, launch at LCX, it uh, more than doubled, I think, 150% up in, in value and usage. And again, coming back to the community, we see that this is uh, at the moment the fastest growing uh, product we've launched. And then there are um, three, four uh, others in the pipeline uh, and two are announced already on the, on the platform. So how do we look at it? Um, you can apply to become, um, to uh, join us at LCX. So there's these uh, barcodes here. Um, you also get um, a sign-up bonus of 100 LCX token if you if you do this today or tomorrow um, to register at the platform, and then you can fill out some information or you just speak to us here. We also have a booth. Um, then we look at it uh, deeply, like how is your product, how where do you stand, how can we help you, uh, we evaluate. Uh, then there's a due diligence phase also because ultimately uh, when we host the token sale we are taking huge liability risks um, because we are the token issuer. LCX becomes the legal issuer under the Liechtenstein framework. We protect the startup from any legal risk because we are issuing it for you, not you. Um, and that's the big legal difference. So if you mess up with any investor onboardings or KYCs or anything in the process, it's our fault. Um, and the team can fully focus on the product and community and everything. Once the token is issued uh, in the market, it's all secondary trading. So these like marketing 
budgets for tokens or a uh, company reserve or something, that's then all like legally seen as a, as a secondary transaction. So, um, and that's why the whole like uh, initial offering is so critical from a legal perspective. Um, yeah, so these are the uh, regulatory approvals we got under the Liechtenstein roof. So there are two token issuer ones is uh, on our, for ourselves. Second is on behalf of other projects. A token generator, so also this making sure that everything, uh, the token had been generated in a good way. We then work typically with CERTIC to do audits on the token. Um, but then there are other roles. TT stands for trusted technology. That's the term describing blockchain and crypto under the, the legal framework. So there's an identity service provider, price service provider, key depository and token depository. These are all uh, custody roles. And exchange service provider where we have exchange.lcx.com as a uh, regular pl platform. Uh, the exchange itself is growing. It's a s smaller exchange in terms of the trading volume, but everything you see there is organic. It's a like strong core community. And uh, we have a, a fast growing community of investors going on the platform. So all the investors who had been uh, investing or buying the token of DGMV, Viz, and Endmaker are already verified on our platform and they can immediately then go into uh, the next project. And that's why, like if I look at the slide before, this evaluation process is important for us because it's our reputation at stake. If we pick a shitty project and present it to our community, uh, they will blame us and say, like, why did you do that? So we always look uh, and work closely with the team, not only for the launch, but actually then for the next two years of the project as well. Um, the key part is the token issuer. I think I mentioned it already. So this is where we are becoming the issuer on behalf of a project. So how do we actually do this and how is the process done? So for the token, um, we uh, help you to get a legal opinion. Uh, under the Liechtenstein laws, which classifies the token. And that's also very unique because uh, under the Liechtenstein framework, there's a clear classification of tokens. You can say, this is a utility, this is a governance token, this is a payment token, uh, this is like an ownership token or other commodity rights, copyright tokens uh, could be there, uh, or even financial instruments, security tokens, grants, loans, uh, these, these kind of things. And there's a clear regulation. It's called a uh, token um, container model. So they see it as a container, the token, which you could fill with any right. So that's why it could be copyright and then copyright laws apply. So and that's why if it's a financial instrument, like a loan or debt, it's typically it's a financial market instrument. And this clarity is important because it gives us security L uh, LCX, um, but also all the investors. And you don't want to have this mess that you get um, uh, problems later on or, or lawsuit or something. Then the, the smart contract audit. So we look at the token that the actual rights are represented in the token as well. So if you have utility rights, how will it be used? If you have uh, governance rights, how's the voting going on? And then also like just the plain security that there's no uh, flaws in the smart contract. Uh, we do this with external partners as well, uh, e.g. CERTIC. Then uh, preparing publishing legal docs. I'll explain what's needed also next slide. Um, but we basically do everything on the legal side. We do uh, help you on all the steps. And then we are also filing a notification that this token sale is happening uh, right away. So it looks like that. So um, at the FMA, there's a token issuance uh, form. And uh, for all token sales above 5 million uh, Swiss francs, you have to become a token issuer or work with us. Uh, everything below, I think they, uh, they're more flexible uh, under, in Liechtenstein. I think uh, under Mika, it's uh, I think a 1 million threshold. But then what do we do? Um, there are two documents there. One is the basic information document uh, and then the terms of the token sale. And the basic information, uh, it's like a little prospectus and it gives legal clarity for all investors who uh, who are in the room who invested in tokens uh, you want to know who's the company who's issuing it who's the team who's responsible so it starts with a address uh, so that's a legal address of the 
um, of the company behind. There are the founders are named. Um, so you see who is behind, and that's uh, like it's a very ba basic thing. But if you look at a lot of uh, tokens which are issued, they have a nice fancy website. But then you look like who is the founders? It's unclear. There are some representative, but are they actually on the board? Do they have a say? I don't know. And then like where's the office? It's all decentralized. That that might be fine as a as a structure. I mean, we also have a decentralized team in many ways, but. Uh, legal part is important because if they mess up you like want to call them or get your lawyers on it and say okay there's something uh, fishy so and that's where i said that's the big opportunity we're right on now in that's the next growth ways of getting b um, the balance right between regulation and innovation because we want to make the token economy happen but we want to get out of the, like all these scams and fraudsters and push them to the side and say, okay, we don't want you, but we want um, like entrepreneurs to thrive. Um, so that's why it's important. At the LTX platform, we support a private sale and a public sale. So the private sale starts with a, a secret link where token investors um, can sign up. Uh, then they get access to all the uh, information upfront and it's typically also comes with special terms uh, to it so whether it's your like uh, friends uh, and, and team who are like signing up uh, who you want to give uh, like super good terms and just get them involved or if it's strategic long-term investors we say okay if you invest a million up uh, you get a good discount but you also uh, need to have like long long-term vesting for example so these things you can do but it's also all done uh, the legal way um, and there we have the investor onboarding, so identification, KYC of all the investors that's uh, required by us. Um, and um, But it's a simple uh, process, typically it takes like one or two minutes to go through it. And we have customer support, uh, which like is a dynamic, motivated team who help you through the process if, you, if you're stuck or if anything missing or so, uh, they support. Um, and uh, we also help with the with uh, company setup, or if you have questions around it, or how do you structure the, the taxes or whatever. So we we are not uh, legally uh, like advisor on that, but we have a lot of experience on how to do that. Um, and then on the on the public sale, uh, it's a similar process, uh, but then the information are public in different rounds, either until they're sold out or a certain let, let deadline. Um, and then there are elements to it like payout, distribution, investing. So I said, if you have special conditions, you want to vest the tokens that they are locked for a certain time. Uh, and then ultimately, the listing at the LCX exchange is guaranteed. So uh, you can also say to your investors, like, at least you have LCX exchange right away uh, as a regulated platform and trading venue. And then uh, we, we open our contact book to also get it listed on Bitfinex, Coinbase, Kraken, or whatever you, uh, you dream of. Um, so this is the dashboard on the right side, how it looks like from a current sale called the Tang token. Um, so it uh, includes uh, video, description, d details about token economics, roadmap, team, white paper, and also the legal part. So you also see that um, here on the right side, you can open the basic information quickly, go through it, what are the rights, the risks uh, of the token. And then we support on our channels as good as we can with social media. We reach out to our verified users. Um, and then on the private sale, it looks like this. So there's an enter access code. So you can distribute them to your contacts, to individuals, uh, investors, uh, to KOLs, so key um, influencers in the market, uh, key opinion leaders. So And then they type in the code, and then they see uh, similar information to the uh, to the public sale, but special conditions uh, and kind of private. And uh, with that, we played it in different ways. So on one side, we had like super secret private sales uh, where they uh, really kept it under the hood. And then on the other side, also where like they like some rumors spread, and then there's a form where you could apply and say like, why should you join as a, a in the early round as well. Um, then on the uh, next uh, time, the kind of advisory services. So it's not necessary to be a Liechtenstein company to do a token sale under the Liechtenstein laws because we are there 
and we would issue it for you. So we've done projects now with a team from UK, from Australia, uh, from Switzerland also. So they, Endmaker, for example, it's a Swiss company, actually called UTXO, like this room, <laughs> uh, AG, uh, which I find a, a great name for, for the project. And uh, so, but they also, like in, 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 in Switzerland, uh, there are some uh, digital assets uh, laws or some things, but not in regards to token issuance. So they leveraged it, um, the token issuance in Liechtenstein. Nevertheless, uh, Liechtenstein is easy to uh, incorporate. You could even incorporate uh, with Bitcoin or Ethereum as a um, uh, as the official company uh, money. So if you incorporate, you always have to put up like in, in Liechtenstein, it's for an AG, 100,000 Swiss francs. Uh, you have to pay in at least 50,000, but you could just do a couple of Bitcoin, uh, deposit it at the LCX platform, and then we give you a proof, uh, even with a stamp uh, signature and everything, that you paid in your share uh, minimum capital, and you can go to the commercial registry uh, to incorporate it. But they accept it. We've done that with a partner also. Uh, quite exciting. Um, then uh, the token development service so there uh, we've done a lot of token development where we actually our team has done the token generation so we've done the smart contracts and uh, looked into all the details of mechanisms within the smart contract developed it with the team some others had their own um, tech uh, team and did it for them and we just reviewed it so both ways work but in any way we'll um, don't let you alone like this is something where we help you uh, pretty exciting is that we've done now several Cardano-based projects, so all different native tokens. I'd love to do something on the Lightning Network, on Bitcoin, uh, who knows, so um, we've not seen it yet, but uh, now Cardano had been growing super quickly, and uh, most recently we've done a project on the Quant Network with a QRC20 standard token, which is cross-blockchain. Um, so they've launched it as, as a QRC20 on Quant Network, which basically can then flow from one blockchain to another very quickly. Uh, next is banking relationships. So they will ask you, uh, where does the funds come from? So if you open up um, a bank account here at Luzerna Cantonal Bank, uh, for example, uh, who is sponsoring this event, uh, they will ask you, how did you raise the funds? Uh, why is it coming on the, on the account? Uh, where does it come from? And then you can ultimately prove with a payout report saying, okay, we've done it the legal way. Uh, here, the, uh, the registration at the FMA, we've uh, done it this way. And this way, you can easily get the funds on the bank account. And then, like the question before is actually how to get a bank account. I think there are some banks who help you. We can also do introductions to that, who are open to it, but they have a risk-based approach, same as us. So they look at who you are, uh, what are your plans, and then they uh, like give you give you options. Um, then the KYC and VIP uh, investor onboarding. So if you have uh, so we are registered identity service provider, so we have to do this uh, the uh, whole due diligence part of the law where we, ha we have to identify every investor. And that's a key part of uh, legal token sales as of, as of now. And we've built a co crypto compliance suite, which is uh, top of the market, um, given the feedback we got from the regulators. It's very fast with um, like the, the selfie uh, taken and upload of IDs and everything. Uh, it's a very smooth process now, uh, bulletproof and tested uh, over several years. Um, and then uh, customer support, I think it's important also because everybody who signs up um, probably has questions about the token, how to find the basic information or the white paper, we just help out. Uh, again, very a good team around it. Payment and collecting funds, that's uh, also important. So you can decide on which currencies you want to accept for your token sale. You could do Bitcoin, uh, you could also accept other uh, tokens. So for NMaker, we did ADA, for example, um, Euro, uh, Ethereum, USDT uh, or USDC um, could be uh, another way to fund. And then we actually uh, don't convert it in something, we just hand it over to you uh, right away. So if uh, somebody's investing Bitcoin, then uh, you get the Bitcoin as well. If somebody's investing um, ADA, then you get the ADA. But um, what's important is you don't have to run behind your investors to get the funds. I've seen it so many times that startups 
done a SAFT agreement, a paper, and like uh, to some crypto inv inv influencer or so, and then uh, they had to like push and say like, okay, you signed this, where's the money? Uh, these things are kind of a thing of the past because here, they're first of all, you don't have to worry about the KYC, they're onboarded here. Um, then they deposit the funds and they can do the transaction uh, and see their tokens instantly, and then you get the funds. The, the way it works for all the investors is that they, after they join the token sale, they click on buy the token and then they see the transaction happening immediately. So they see your tokens popping up in their wallet right away, even if there's like lockups or like it's not distributed right away, but they get this interaction that they uh, get the tokens right away. And then uh, distributed investing also a key part. So you want to have like different structures saying, um, you don't want to get like a s high sell pressure in the market um, or like a pump and dump scheme. So you integrate vesting schemes in different ways, especially if it's larger investors going in, you want to lock them in for a year or two or like different on a daily basis being vesting. And that's something we implement right away with a vesting smart contract and a platform based uh, vesting as well. So they can come to um, the token sale platform and then claim their tokens see how many are available and then and then claim them so that's uh, have been uh, yeah got very good feedback and then ultimately listing at, at LCX exchange also important because you want to get um, a dynamic secondary market right from start uh, we typically list with several um, trading pairs right away and then um, help you also get uh, listed on other exchanges it's important for, for me, this like listing on exchanges is um, something you should not wait too long because with every listing, including the one at LCX, you're attracting new users. So your token is the best marketing tool because if you're going up on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap in, in, in a like market cap, um, there will be millions of people who will look at it and say like, okay, what's that interesting company? And then they come to your product, they use it, they test it, and see what they can do. So it's uh, not only about like just speculation on the utility token, but rather on on the usage um, on the platform. And I mean, for me, this this model also how it's incorporated uh, under Liechtenstein laws of this voucher as a utility token is, is fascinating. Like imagine you would give out a thousand tickets to a, a concert of your uh, biggest uh, superstar musician. This is a utility also. So you have a, a ticket to use to go into this concert. But ultimately, like the day before the concert, the price of the ticket goes up. So and that's the similar model or the example I often give when we talk about utility tokens. Why is it like price going up and down? Of course it does. Because if the product is the number one product, everybody will use it. You see it with Ethereum. You have to use it to spend gas fees. And there is a real utility, but there's still value uh, with that so um, yeah that's kind of the, the summary here you can go to the token sale manager uh, also just scan the barcode and sign up and you can get 100 LTX token as a bonus if you if you sign up now um, so we help you going through the, the whole process so with that thank you very much and onwards and upwards Any questions you have? Here, number one. You, you talked about, uh, you mentioned the uh, legal opinion prior to the listing. And is there any risk of a misclassification? And if so, can you get a ruling from the government before you mm -hmm. get the listing? Good question. So it's around legal opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, can you get a ruling from the government if it's like uh, real, uh, really a utility token? And the answer is yes. So um, there's a process where we can file it at the FMA for ruling. It's I think they charge a fee for it, like a thousand uh, Swiss francs or so. But then you get a letter and saying yes, the legal opinion from the lawyer is not only opinion. We agree uh, with that. So that's an important thing, uh, which can be done. Other question over here. Yes. Um, can you legally form a DAP in Liechtenstein? Because you said the first thing is you need an address. So yeah, you mean a decentralized app or DAO, uh, maybe a decentralized uh, autonomous organization um, can be formed 
um, so, t so the way, it, like I've not seen it in, in Liechtenstein as a DAO model. I know it from Wyoming in the US, they allow DAOs to incorporate. But it's basically, it's like a foundation model. So you would incorporate a foundation, and you, Liechtenstein is known for foundations. That's how they grew in the 80s and 90s. And it still is, like IKEA Foundation is there, uh, big charity foundations, family foundations are, are over there. And uh, the unique thing about the foundation under Swiss and also Liechtenstein uh, law is that there's no owner of it. There's always um, uh, like a, um, one goal of the foundation, saying like uh, grow the ecosystem and everything goes to that goal. Um, and that's, uh, that's why there's no ultimate uh, beneficial, ultimate, uh, ultimate beneficial owner. Uh, to it, and that's the main difference. So, if you would do a DAP or DAO um, under this roof, uh, you could do a foundation. It would probably probably work best. Other questions? Here. Uh, you said um, ICOs, offering ICOs for US residents is a problem. How about if you're an American company? Yeah. Is that so, um, I would say, um, like from our perspective, if you're an American company, you could still do the ICO with us. Uh, but we would exclude the, uh, the initial offering to US market. And then, uh, once it's issued for the first time, uh, you could speak to the Kraken, FTX US or whatever to get listed and then, and then ultimately address US clients over there. And um, I know from Coinbase that they also review the tokens uh, in very detail and they don't list any securities, so they would list your utility uh, token, for example, as well. Yeah, so that that would we've not done it yet, uh, but uh, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so just to clarify, the US agency could do an ICO, but you wouldn't be able to sell to US residents. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Do you mean liquidity for trading? Okay, so the question is around liquidity on trading and market making ultimately. So there's a, a certain liquidity which is coming from all the investors already, so they have your token. But you also want to have the other side that it's not only selling but also building up. So what we do is we work with market makers. We work with uh, large ones like Wintermute but also smaller ones. Um, and we also have a, a small market making team. So. Um, what we actually uh, do is we, uh, we uh, set goals together with the startups saying, okay, you need 100,000 uh, liquidity on both sides during uh, this and this time. And then we help you achieve that with the market maker together. And do you help with LTX alone or other centralized exchanges? Uh, these, the market makers then can also take you to all exchanges. Um, so we'll start with the first listing at LTX and then um, typically you you want to do a DEX right away, so like going Uniswap or V3 or something like that, and then uh, there we can like also help you on how to set the, uh, the ranges and trading ranges and these kind of things, how to do liquidity pools, and then the market makers can help as well. Yeah, one more question here. Good question. I forgot, that's the, the main advantage. Um, at LCX is like we don't take any upfront costs. It's um, uh, basically we are on your side and we'll get a percentage of the funds raised. Um, so there's a range, you can talk to us to, to find out more, but basically if you succeed, we, we benefit as well. And that's why we are quite critical in selecting the, the companies because it's not only our reputation, but ultimately also our profits at stake, um, and uh, so that makes it, makes it exciting. Yeah, one yeah. more question here. What is the, uh, for the utility tokens, what, what is the uh, governance model for people buying tokens? What is the room for influencing? Is it simply con uh, participation to the token community? Or how far can I, like in the day, or can I contribute, influence the strategy then going forward of the token? Mm -hmm. Because I'm part of, I basically part of the company. It's belonging to me. Mm -hmm. So th this is about the token economics, uh, as far as I understood. 
from your question is you structure the token with different use cases. So it has a utility use case on your platform. It has probably voting rights or so where you could do governance. And then also there are some rights uh, with the company. You can say we have a company reserve. We have uh, a marketing pool to incentivize more users in the future. So you could structure it in different ways. Um, and then like we just look into the different uh, models which are out there, which had been uh, done in the past and there you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I think there, these things have been kind of tested in the market and you can take these. Yeah, one more question? Thank you. Regarding uh, tokens, um, what about uh, like hybrid tokens? I mean tokens that are contemporarily, uh, can contemporarily fall within a uh, different set of laws. Have this happened yet, or is it uh, mm -hmm. possible in Liechtenstein actually? Right, I mean uh, currently. So, so a hybrid token models, if it's possible or not, to fell in different categories. Um, we've not done it yet. Um, what we've seen, and also with the discussion with the government, if you look at some of the presentations, they look at it in separate uh, buckets. Um, so, a big topic is tokenization of assets. We've launched uh, Timons.com as a tokenized diamonds uh, project to showcase what can be done there and will grow uh, ultimately in our next couple of months. Um, but with that model, the government looked at how to tokenize a painting, for example. So there's a token which owns the like ownership of the painting, which is an ownership uh, token. If it uh, would be like a stock or so, it you would ultimately be a security as you own shares of the company. That's one side. And then the other side is utility. And especially with the painting, it's an interesting model which had been discussed by Thomas Dünser, one of the government uh, officials there, many times because he said there's the ownership of the painting, which could be ownership token, and then who will like show the painting? Do you want to hang it in your uh, living room? Then you need utility tokens, pay for it and say, I'll get it for a month or something, or museums, uh, you could donate utility tokens to them and then they can pay it, but this model of like separating it uh, was a way they had been discussing many times. And and putting it together, I've not seen it, but might be possible as well, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Time frame. Okay. So uh, he asked about time frame. So basically, we for us, it took two years, several million dollars to get all these regulatory approvals. We are token issuer, so for us it took long. But if you want to start, we could do it tomorrow. So we could f like get all the documents up quite quickly. Realistically, like from um, like once we say we, we do it together, and after the evaluation process, I'll say four weeks or something. So it can be can be fast. Over here. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit difficult to, to use it for an initial uh, token offering because it's not ready. The, the entrepreneur, the project is not there. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it different in Liechtenstein or, the, or, or, so, or not? I don't know exactly, um, but the, the question was around the utility token. So if you issue it, that um, the, the use case has to be in place right from start. Um, there, but there are many ways to just offer it right away. Um, so if it's required under the, the Swiss laws, uh, or so you can just come up with a very simple tool or so overnight to actually show this, but it's not a real, like it is a real uh, usage of the utility to comply with the law, but for the community, it's not that exciting. So I think uh, with that uh, things, uh, you can ultimately use it with NMaker, who is a, a Swiss company, they had a product in place already, so we didn't have to question. It, uh, it could be used, the to like the moment the token was there, it could be used immediately, and it's still the case. So that's why it was also a very good case, because uh, the product was already uh, growing, and we saw that there was traction. Okay, last question, I would say. Something. One more here. Yeah? in Liechtenstein and then right away you start selling the to token on your on your exchange mm -hmm. and you can sell it of course worldwide let's say except perhaps certain jurisdictions mm -hmm. 
what, what is the what does it, what is the usual case do you need to do some uh, uh, compliance due diligence in uh, for example are you already okay in Europe for instance mm -hmm. or and in m most of the countries yeah I think we have uh, users from more than 100 countries on the platform um, so it's super international it's we're basically in a similar bracket as any any banks uh, so if you if you come to Lugano and want to open a bank account you can do it even as a foreigner um, but they have to then check and so similar to us you have to go through the uh, verification process but uh, it's super international and uh, we target the European economic area Europe that's where we're strong I think also digital Europe and the, the hub here of um, with plan B and and whole Europe it's the biggest chance now for us to set us apart from Silicon Valley um, nevertheless we have uh, users from Africa from from South America uh, all over Asia um, so super super international That's right. The Liechtenstein uh, compliance rules are, v are pretty strict. Uh, you know, there had been these scandals in 2000 uh, with tax uh, avoidance and everything. So they had been putting in super, super strict uh, rules now. And they had been rated uh, by Standard Poor's uh, with a AAA rating. So the highest rating you can get as a country. And that's what we are also protecting with the L and the name, the reputation. So we don't want to have any any problems in that regard so we are really sticking to to these things but we do it for the project so if you launch a project come to us uh, we are on the Villa Siani uh, first floor at right next to Satoshi Gallery talk to us and uh, thank you all for joining huh?